All right, it looks like we got uh, a couple more people joining, but we are recording this session as well, so um, we'll post it on our website and our, our YouTube channel. Uh, again, this is Bobby Krause, the Director of Student Activities here at Falls Church High School, and I just want to thank everybody who was able to join us tonight. I know it was kind of a, a short notice as we were finished making our, making our teams and then uh, trying to get notice out as fast as we could to get going. And at the same time, a couple of our sports with cheer and football have been up and running since February 4th. So we're trying to touch everybody at the same, like everyone's base at the same time, but not, uh, the amount of notice was, wasn't great. So we'll make sure we post this on our website, uh, once we uh, get done tonight and then, um, you can share with anybody else if they have questions. But my, my big focus tonight is to kind of go through some real general information about what sports looks like this year. Um, and then from there, I really kind of want to, I'd love to hear from some of our parents and if some, some of our athletes are here, that'd be great too. You know, just you know, my interaction just at this last football game was kind of our first event this past Monday. Um, you know, just getting feedback from different people and, and understanding kind of where they're at, what they're, what they understand. I mean, you know, BB, Caitlin and I have kind of all, all been in the building now pretty much, pretty much since May or so, but um, you know, we don't always really know what, what gets out to the community and what you guys see. and so we want to make sure everyone kind of feels comfortable going forward. And if you have questions, we'll, we'll do our best to answer that. So it is a really, really exciting time right now for Falls Church High School and Falls Church High School Athletics specifically. Like I said, uh, we, we had our first football game on Monday night. And, uh, you know, if you saw it, if you were there, if you watched the live stream or if you just checked the score afterwards, it obviously wasn't the result we were hoping for. Um, but, you know, it just it just felt real good to have a bunch of people in the stands and um, you know, be outside playing football, even though it was a little chilly. Uh, it was definitely, you know, just nice to kind of have that feeling again. It's been a long time, so it's really exciting. Uh, on top of that, we're also wrapping up the winter season. Uh, we have uh, one of our athletes, Aiden Grady, is going to be swimming tomorrow at the state championship. And I, last time I checked, he's one of the, be the best breaststrokers in the, in the state. So we're looking for hopefully a state title out of him. Um, and then on Monday, our track teams are still going. To, uh, we have two athletes. Alec Ryan is going to run the 1,000, and Tashir Dockery is going to run the hurdles for us down there. So both, look for some really good results from them uh, early next week. So real kind of hectic time, but also really fun time um, right now at Full Stretch High School. So, again, thanks for everybody coming tonight. Uh, we're kind of going to go through our general format is um, just some basic information. A lot of it's going to be kind of for me and my two assistant DSAs, Caitlin Charbonneau and Belinda Kim. Uh, we're going to pause a little bit in the middle. I'm going to throw monkey, monkey wrenchness a little bit for Mrs. Gagamire, our Booster Club president. She's going to give a little information about what the Booster Club does. And then um, the, the, at the end, I'll have some time for some general questions. And then probably the most important part will be the breakout sessions where you can go by sport and you'll be able to ask you know, some more sport-specific questions uh, to your actual sport coaches. So. Um, Thanks again for joining us. Now we're going to jump right in. First, first slide. Uh, this is just our activities office, just so you're aware of who to contact. Some people you can contact if you need to get a hold of anybody. I'm going to get to the slide in a little bit about our uh, our uh, athletics website called www.fallschurchsports.org. So all this information is here. You don't have to screenshot it or scribble it down or anything. You can you can get there pretty easily. So, um, but again, I'm Bobby. I'm I'm the director of student activities. It's kind of the athletic director with a with a couple of different hats. I have two awesome assistant DSAs, BB and Caitlin. Uh, Don Ferguson, if, if you're having any trouble with the AR site, which I got to imagine a good number of you are, um, it's not it's not a site that we created. It's just something that we we're mandated to, to use. I know it's been a struggle for a lot of families, but if you have struggled with that, Dawn Ferguson's kind of our expert on that. So you've probably talked to her if you've had any issues. Um, and then two really important members of our team, uh, Jake Ivey and Brandon Thomas, they're our certified athletic trainers. Um, they're, they're the ones that kind of keep us safe and, and make sure no one gets hurt and they're healthy and all that good stuff. So um, that's our, our kind of our activities team. And you'll meet some of our coaches in just a second, I believe. So um, 
These are our head coaches for the for the fall season. Coach Aziz, our football coach. Coach Herb, our cheer coach. Jordan Hales is our field hockey. Matt Smith is our cross country coach. You might have seen him from track. He's finishing up track right now. Uh, BB Kim, who's also our assistant DSA, is our head volleyball coach, and then Seth Richardson, our golf coach. So um, these are our head coaches. Is probably these may or may not be your direct points of contact, but if you need to get some, in touch with somebody, these are definitely people you want to touch, uh, reach out to. So um, if you have any specific questions, or they can definitely answer about each of their sports. All right, so this isn't working, but this this is uh, probably the the most important thing that if you walk away with one piece of information, this is what you want to know. This is our school web, uh, athletics website, so fallschurchsports.org. It has all of our our calendars, our schedules uh, updated in real time. If anything changes, it's going to be there first, and then it'll go out other ways. So if you have a question about, oh, you know, are we playing we're playing field hockey today, or you know, we're getting some weather, or and it's going to be posted here first, and updates go here automatically too as soon as things are scheduled. So, um, this is a really good resource. This is also a good spot where you can get the registration site if you need to get back there. There's a link to that as well. A bunch of files and um, are all posted on here. This is where we put our results from different uh, contests, whether it's games or meets or whatever it is. So it's really kind of a one-stop shop for everything Falls Church athletics. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take a brief pause because I think this is a, a good time um, to to let Miss Gagamire jump in for just a second. Uh, so I put it here because there's also a link off of our site to the Athletic Booster site. So at the top page is a tab called Boosters, and they have their own site which they've been working on recently. So um, you can go there and, and check out everything with the boosters. But Mrs. Gagamire, go ahead, take it. Sure. All right. Uh, thank you, Bobby. Um, Welcome everyone to uh, fall sports. Kind of weird to be saying that in February. But I wanted to tell you a little bit about the boosters tonight. If you don't know who we are, we are a parent run volunteer organization and we support all of the sports at Falls Church with fundraising activities. Um, almost everything that you can think of is paid for by the athletic boosters. There are a few things that Fairfax County pays for, but the majority of them are ones that we pay for through fundraising athletic equipment, uniforms, um, field maintenance. We do offer a scholarship that happens in the spring. Um, and to the extent that we'll be able to do these in the future, we also pay for team invitationals and um, going to uh, conferences as well. So um, again, a lot of what we normally do to uh, fundraise is limited at the moment. And the good news is that we have been able to scale back as many of the expenses as we can. But when we need uniforms, we have to buy uniforms and we need money to do that. So I do hope that you um, think about potentially joining the boosters this year. But at the very, very least, and I wonder if I'm going to be able to switch screens. Can I switch to the next slide? The things I want you to come away with today from my point of view is as uh, Coach Cross mentioned, we do actually have our own website. You can get to it by going to fallschurchsports.org and hitting the boosters tab. Or if you can remember, fchsathleticboosters.org is our website. We do have social media as well. Um, specifically, the, the, the one that we work on the most is uh, Facebook. If you search Jaguar Athletics, you'll be able to find our Facebook page. Um, I know that, like, for instance, with live streaming, um, it's posted on, on the Twitter site, but we also post it on Facebook as well since a lot of the parents are on that um, so that you can make sure you go there if you're not able to attend a game or you want to send the link to someone that you want to watch uh, the games, you can go to our Facebook page. We're meeting um, the first Tuesday of every month, and right now we're doing that via Zoom. So you can take down my uh, email address here, and I'm happy to add you to any of our Zoom meetings that we have so that you can find out what's going on. Um, one thing that I do also want to mention is that we have a weekly email. It's called the Booster Blast, and it comes out on Wednesday. If you're not getting that, please go to our website and make sure that you sign up there um, to get that email. We work with the athletic department every week to put that together, and it has all types of information for all sports. I know your individual coaches are going to be really good about communicating with you about your individual sport, but if there are things that relate to the entire athletic department, you're going to get it in that weekly email. So make sure that you subscribe to that. Yes, there's fundraising information in there, but you can get it 
It doesn't cost anything to get it. You don't have to be a booster member to get it, but we want to make sure that you guys know that it exists so that you get that information each week. If we can go to the next slide. All right, the last thing I wanted to talk about is how you can help us and how you can support us. We are selling spirit wear. Um, we did it recently at the, uh, the football game, but you can do it through our Square store. Um, the web address, the easiest way to get to it is the bit.ly that's here, Jaguar Spirit Wear. Um, I want to point out that if you do go to fallschurchsports.org, there are spirit wear options there that are being sold. Those don't support us in any way, shape, or form. So if you buy from there, it's fine, but it doesn't support the athletic boosters. You have to either buy it through um, our Square store from our website or through Burke Sporting Goods where we have um, a relationship with them and we get um, a feedback or we get money back from them on the, um, on the spirit wear. The fans in the stands, some of you may have seen this through um, the winter sports, but we're still doing those for fall sports as well. You can buy cutouts of your family and friends. We've been doing a lot of restaurant nights. The next one um, that's upcoming is March the 3rd, which is uh, Panera Night, and that's going to be from 4 to 8. We have a huge golf tournament coming up on April 17th. Um, that's uh, at 9 a.m. in the morning. You can find out information about that through the email, the Booster Blast, but you can also get information about that on our website. Um, and we have a unique collection that's coming up on April the 24th. As I mentioned, we'd love for you to join the Boosters, but even if you don't do that, the best way that you can also support is through volunteers um, opportunities. And again, some of those are limited, but we're starting to be able to open up and do a lot more of those with uh, different types of fundraisers. So please be on the lookout for that in our email. Um, and we know, we'll let you know when we need help. We'll let the coaches know when we need help. And at the end of the day, we're here to support all of the student athletes. So I appreciate your time. And if you have any questions, as again, as I said earlier, please feel free to email me. I'd be happy to get back to you. Thanks again. Go Jags. Thank, thanks, Bonnie, for um, sharing all that information. And thanks for everything you guys have done this year. I, I could definitely say, and I know a lot of a lot of the families that are here, we've, we've talked a few times. And uh, you, you know this year has definitely been tough financially. With, uh, you know, we basically have not had any ticket sales. and over a year now and or almost a year now and then in addition to that all of our really big fundraisers that are our big uh we, we take in a lot of money like the jaguar 5k or we run snack bars at our events or um we've done you know we haven't done our fund in a while just because of the you know the, the financial climate and everything so a lot of our big fundraisers are not really there our ticket revenues are pretty much zero at this point and then uh you know, we're still trying to play sports and we're still trying to, you know, we we're, we're, are making sure our kids have all the safety equipment they need. You know, we want them to look good too. We want them to have uniforms and we want them to have warm ups and we want them to, you know, have the full, full athletic experience to the best we can. So Booster Club has been awesome and, and providing a lot of that fun so that we can kind of get by at the time. And so if you, if you have any time or energy or um, means to make donations, it's, it's all really appreciated. All right, so I'm going to switch switch gears again a little bit and talk about um, some some things that are maybe not really different, but are just kind of an emphasis this year, just be, given the current environment. Um, our practice expectations. So uh, this this shouldn't be a, a shocker, but you know, we're, it's expected that kids come to practice every day with clean clothes. That we don't have the use of locker rooms anymore. Um, that, that's been taken away. So this will kind of help that I think because kids can't just throw their clothes in a locker and wear them for three or four days without taking them home. So uh, but please make sure the kids are coming with their proper attire. I know it's, you know, we're going to get some days where it's, uh, where it's going to be cold. And so making sure they have layers to get dressed into um, is, is really important. Our, our facility is pretty much on, on very stringent, like almost like a lockdown is the best way to describe it. So um, we are doing our best to keep teams separated. So we don't really have the option to let, to let kids, you know, wait inside or wait in the gym or wait in the gym lobby, just because we're trying to eliminate as many, uh, cross-contamination possibilities as we possibly can. So um, we're keeping teams separated outside. We're keeping them separated in the gyms. And so just being prepared for that, being ready for any weather. Although I'm saying that probably in the nicest day in a long time. So today maybe not the best example, but it'll, it'll definitely get cold again before before the spring is here. So um, students are signing in every day using a QR code. Um, that may change in the future as we get back to school and um, because they're not going to be doing that for 
um, the general population, but for right now, we're using that QR code from the sign in. That really helps us for when um, there is any kind of uh, concerns about COVID that we can tell we can tell the health department exactly who was there and when, because we everything has time stamp. Um, and also, it's another refresher for the kids just to double check that you know, am I feeling all right? Do I feel like I might be feeling good? And um, hopefully, if they are having any symptoms, they'll they'll turn around and go back home. So that's still being done every day. Um, one of the big emphasis is for me this year with our coaches is that we start and end on time to the best of our ability. I know in the past sometimes, you know, coaches might've gotten excited, made a, let a drill go for too long or, um, you know, practices just kind of dragged on for a little bit beyond what the, the uh, posted time was. But this year you know, with our facilities, um, you know, I said we're, we're really doing our best to kind of eliminate teams interacting with each other. Uh, just to kind of hopefully stop any spread if there is anything. So um, coaches have been instructed to make sure they end on time. So hopefully that's going to make this real easy for for parents to know exactly when they need to pick kids up, when they need to get them um, or drop them off or anything like that. So um, coaches will be sticking to those times. If there are any issues, then please feel free to let me know with that. I think that first line kind of signs uh, or sums it up pretty good. We're, you know, we're all in this together. I think, you know, we've done a really good job. I'm not going to say that Falls Church has been immune to uh, any COVID cases. We've had, we've had a few. Um, you know, when I talked to my colleagues around the county, other DSAs. I, I would say we're def definitely on the low end compared to some of the other schools. Unfortunately, you know, uh, competitive sports just don't lend themselves to the best mitigation strategies, you know, with, you know, continuous mask wearing and, um, Social distancing is obviously a challenge. So, um, you know, unfortunately, these these things might come up. But uh, our, our our family has been really good about if they're not feeling good, stay at home. And if there is an issue, call and call in the school, letting us know right away. Um, that's that's probably the, my big thing that to ask is that you know if somebody somebody te tests positive, your family or if uh, one of your student athletes tests positive, to let us know as fast as you can because we can kind of we can stop. You know, we can stop and take a pause on our activities and make sure it doesn't spread throughout the whole school. And I think that's going to be really important as we kind of, you know, as we start welcoming kids back to our uh, general population classes and moving forward, that we're just really going to have to be on top of, uh, you know, checking with our, our students in the morning before they need to go to school and making sure that they're feeling well. And and I, I, I've met with most of the teams so far. I'm trying to think if I missed anybody yet, but um when I meet with the team that I tell them I, I was somebody who would never miss school, I would, especially practices. And, you know, I don't care how sick I was, I was still going to go. And this is just not the year to do that. You know, if you got, if you have any symptoms of not being a hundred percent, the best thing to do for you and for your team, your teammates really is, is, is to stay home if you can. So, so if parents, if, you know, if we can ask you just, you know, one more time, I know everyone's doing the best they can just kind of keep an eye on it because, um, the effects, unfortunately, the health the health department with athletics that they're really just cut and dry. Where um, they they don't even really contact trace. They're just gonna say that's it. You're done for two weeks. The whole team's gonna get put on quarantine. So, um, so you know, this, we got to keep doing the best we can with that. So, and communication with coaches, is, you know, obviously always important. And your coaches hopefully in a little bit are gonna tell you exactly what the what best way to communicate with them is. So spectators uh, are an ever-changing thing in Fairfax County right now. I know some of you probably started getting links today to a sign-up genius to sign up to be a spectator at your uh, kids' events. Right now, the way that it's going is indoor events is 25 spectators, which works out pretty well for our volleyball teams um, with having you know two you know, parents or two parents or two tickets per um, per kid. Uh, for our outdoor venues, it is 250, and every every sport pretty much is broken down where the home team gets a substantial number of tickets and the, the away team gets a, a handful of tickets with the idea that you know trying to at least have at least one parent can go to each away event. Um, the, the governor of Virginia did come out with some updated guidance that will go into effect March 1st, and it, those spectator numbers do seem to be like they're going to increase. Um, we're, we're in a weird position where – we get lumped in with entertainment venues, even though we're a school and a sports facility. So um, we're still just waiting for some clearance on that. But um, I don't see the num number of spectators going down. I'm kind of hoping they're going to ease up on that a little bit and um, let us have more spectators. So we'll we'll do our best to communicate with you. Hopefully, uh, when you signed up on the AR site, uh, the registration site, that you put in a good email address that you check regularly. 
because that's the easiest way that I can send out emails to everybody who's playing a sport this year. So just uh, check on that to make sure it's up to date. I said, uh, most of you probably have started to get your, either from your coaches or from the, uh, from me directly the links to uh, sign up for uh, the different sports. So please make sure you do sign up. We're not going to be able to take any walk-ups or any walk-ins. Um, and then, and the limits are unfortunately have to be strictly enforced because we cannot go over the 25 for indoor or or uh, 250 spectators outdoors. Uh, mass, and, mass and social distancing is always required, so it's really important that you wear a mask when you come either inside or outside. It doesn't it doesn't matter. It has to be on the entire time, even if you're sitting on the other side all by yourself. The expectation is that you wear a mask the entire time, um, and you maintain at least a six foot social distance with everybody else in the facility. The, the only caveat to that is that if if you are family members, that you can obviously sit together because you live in the same household, and um, that's not going to we're not going to tear families apart just because of that. So, um, yeah, so you can sit with family members. Otherwise, everyone has to be six feet apart. And the biggest thing, too, is, you know, if we ask, if, if you're not feeling well, it's the same thing for our students, and we expect the same thing for our spectators, that uh, if you're not feeling 100%, just please stay home. Hopefully, you can watch the, the live stream. Hopefully, the Internet's working that day. So, All right, so this, this is our last um, kind of thing. Uh, I, I don't want to get into the details too much about what live streaming is. Uh, we're still waiting on Fairfax County to, to come out and they're supposedly, they bought all this equipment that's going to basically run our live stream for us. Um, unfortunately that's not been installed yet, even though it was promised about two months ago. So we're, we're in a tough position where we're, uh, we're just, we, we have an activities office that that's doing the best they can. And obviously there's a lot of other things that are added on our plate this year with COVID and trying to make sure that everyone's getting screened and uh, people are keeping their distance and, our teams are taken care of and our regular facility management stuff that we have to do. And so we're, we're doing our best with the live stream. We, we feel like we got it down pretty good for indoor events. Um, we don't have the equipment really for the outdoor events, but we're going to try the best we can um, kind of moving forward to, to stream things. Our, our focus kind of really being on the events where uh, we, we can't let in everybody who wants to be there. So like a good example would be varsity football, uh, which we had on this past Monday. You know, there's a lot of people who, who would like to have tickets, but we, we hit the 250 max pretty quickly. Uh, I don't think we'll hit the 250 max for like field hockey or um, or freshman JV football or uh, cross country is a little different. Golf, we can't have spectators on the golf course. We never really have in the past. But um, so so we're uh, my 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 part here is just kind of say we're we're gonna try our best with, we, with the equipment we have to to live stream stuff outside when we can, um, and then. I guess if anybody has any expertise in this area or knows someone who does, if they want to reach out, that'd be great. We did, um, we did uh, hire someone to do our varsity football game on this Monday. So if you saw it, it probably looked like you were almost watching like ESPN when, when it was up and run. It took, there's some internet issues in the beginning, but then afterwards, once it was really connected, well, it, it looked really good. And unfortunately that, that um, service is really cost prohibitive. It's, it's rather expensive um, to, to run that service. So, but we're going to do our best and try to keep it up. But check our Twitter. We'll post whatever we have up. We'll post on FC Jags Athletics. Um, the other teams are, are kind of in the same boat as we are, so they'll provide links when, when they have them, and we'll post that on our Twitter account too so you can get those as well. So and I believe that's my last question on my last slide. So hold on one second. So what we'll do now is um, – Actually, I'll pause for a second. I don't know if Bibi or Caitlin have anything that they want to add. I kind of ran through pretty quickly, but I wanted to give some time for questions as well. Bibi, Caitlin, have anything? Nope, I don't want to invite all the parents. Congratulations for your son or daughter. You made our fall teams, and we look forward to seeing you guys at these games and or virtually. Yep, and I'll just echo that. Um, thanks for everybody for your support. Um, we look forward to working with you this season. Awesome. Thank you very much. So what I'll do now is um, in the middle of your screen, you should have kind of two little circles and one of them is a person with their hand raised. If anybody has any questions they'd like to ask, you can just go ahead and raise your hand and then we will um, give you the ability to turn on your microphone and you can ask your question.
All right, the carry should be able to get. Hi there. I was wondering about changing for those who are going to in-person school starting on the second. Um, is there a place for them to change clothes between school and practice? Yeah, so um, th there's there's a couple of options. Um, we we are allowing some teams to go through the lock, like use the locker room as a storage facility. Because um, so the what could basically could happen is a coach could um, open they have the ability to kind of open a locker room and the, and the kids could go in and get changed in, in like pairs or or in like at three at most. Um, but the bathrooms are also another option. It just kind of just depends on the sport. Like that does not really work well for like football who have all those pads and everything, but a sport maybe like cross country or something like that, you know, they could use the restrooms in, in the school. Um, it's not a really great solution, but we, we have been told that we can't use locker rooms in a traditional sense anymore. And that, that came straight from the health department. So uh, there's really no, no wiggle room on that, but I think we're going to have to kind of be a little creative, but what we can find space for sure. See if we have any, any other questions. If not, we can uh, we can kick off the other portion where that's kind of meet the coaches session in a second. All right. So um, my co my coaches that are in here, what's going to happen is I'm going to post the links in the chat um, with each sport and where their breakout session is. And then just give the coaches a minute because I'm going to have to go in and, and promote them to moderators. It's just kind of the, the easiest way to, to do this. So um, so coaches can, and everyone can click on the link for the sport that they're they're looking to go join. And then uh, I'll bounce around real quick and just kind of promote who needs to be able to speak and everything from there. So the link will go in just a second. So go ahead and. I'll, I'm gonna. I'll come back to this room in a minute, but everybody can go ahead and, and jump into their specific sports ones, and then you can ask if you have sports specific questions as well.
Hey Matt, did you have a question for me? I saw your your hand went up. Is it just you or is there everybody? There's a bunch of people in here. Yeah. Do you want me to give you I'll a call in a little bit? I'll ask you later. Okay. Yeah, I'm d I'm done with my session. Okay. Do you want me to give you a call? In a couple? I'm I'm bouncing around with some uh, cheer parents. Do you want me to give you a call in a couple minutes or? No, I'll just text you. All right. Cool. Bye. Perfect. Thanks. Talk to you later. Bye.